friends, and welcome to another episode of the Wooden Burn Podcast. My name is Emily, and I am just so glad that you are here today. I'm coming to you from Kentucky in the United States, where I live with my husband and our beautiful little boy and our soon-to-be second child. <laughs> Um, I had zero intentions of filming a podcast today. We had a pretty rough night last night with our toddler. Um, he's been doing great with sleeping, but something was up last night and he just wasn't having a pleasant night. <laughs> um, so I am quite tired, but, um, I put on this outfit this morning and it just filled my heart with such joy. <laughs> that I felt up to filming, and so here we are. I have made myself a delicious cup of tea. It's actually in this very special teacup mug here. It is one of my husband's grandmother's mugs. Um, so it's, it's really quite lovely. It's got this like lotus or something flower on it. And it's kind of funny because he, <laughs> he like went over to her house and just kind of snitched one out of the set just because he told me it was really sentimental to him and special and so <laughs> I don't remember what it was. It's probably been a year or two now, but he just he took it <laughs> Rascal um, But anyway, so I've made myself a cup of tea. We're just gonna have a cozy quiet knitting chat video I've got um, obviously a finished object to talk about and then a couple a half finished object and then a couple of sock projects and then um a sort of soon to be project <laughs> so it's all all about the knitting today i'm hoping to keep this one a little bit shorter because i want to do some knitting um while my toddler's napping and with his current record he's been doing shorter naps during the day um usually less than two hours so I'm hoping to get this done pretty quickly and then be able to have some just relaxing and knitting time. I've got some podcast videos to catch up with that I'm very excited about. Um, but anyway, that being said, let's get into it. Um, I have one little admin thing of note to say here at the beginning. I had mentioned in my last couple of videos that I was planning to do a hand-dyed yarn mini skein collection update in my Etsy shop. Actually, it was supposed to go live today because today is March 19th, which is the first official day of spring in 2024. However, since then, um, I have just come to the realization that right now, <laughs> trying to squeeze in dyeing yarn and whatnot. It's just not gonna happen. Um, I'm really bummed about it. I really wanted to try and do it, but there was one day I was trying, I was starting to pull like everything out to do it and I just couldn't. I was so tired and I just was not feeling it and such is life right now. <laughs> Um, I think that what I'm planning to do is I'll just leave the yarn that's in my Etsy shop at the moment. I'll leave it there and if it ends up selling, it does. And if it doesn't, um, in a few months, I'll probably just close my Etsy shop for now. Um, but yeah, I've just come to the realization that as much as I feel inspired and I want to dye yarn, um, trying to dye it to sell and stuff is just not where my headspace is at right now. And I would honestly rather use the bare yarn that I have, the undyed yarn, to augment my stash. I have a lot of like single skeins of very variegated colored yarns or speckled or colorful or whatever and um, very little solids so it would be better financially for me to use the undyed yarn that I have to supplement the things in my stash for different projects but that being said I have no plans of dyeing any yarn anytime soon because it's just yeah this pregnancy in particular I have felt so so tired um the whole time i've had very low levels of energy and so it has made it difficult to do not difficult it has made it slightly more difficult to do just your normal day-to-day -day things let alone trying to do something like yarn dyeing so unfortunately there will not be any sort of a mini skein collection update i really wish i could but it's just not going to happen this year and it might not happen for a couple of years maybe maybe next year when I have like a 10 month old um, and a toddler, that sounds like a party, um, <laughs> maybe then or the year after, I'm not sure. We'll just play it by ear. But for right now, for the foreseeable future, at least for 2024, I'm 
not going to be doing any yarn dyeing. So hopefully you weren't looking forward to it too, too much. Um, I know a lot of people are trying to work from their stashes this year, which I think is phenomenal. That's what I'm trying to do. Um, so I totally understand if you're not really in a yarn buying mood anyway. Um, yes, so that's the one little bit of admin that I have here at the beginning. And now we can just dive into talking about the elephant in the room, my beautiful louder vest, which is a pattern by Rebecca Clow of the Craya Bea podcast. <sighs> I am so happy with how this project turned out. It turned out so precisely what I had imagined in my head and that so rarely happens for me. Um, I feel like I'll have projects that are like you know 85 or 90 percent there but they're not like 100 percent there's something there's like some little flaw there and this just turned out exactly as I had envisioned it. This is actually the outfit that I was imagining when I picked the yarn and when I applied for the test knit and all of that. So this is a some of my hand dyed yarn. It is a fingering weight yarn on a 75-25 superwash merino nylon blend, and I held it double throughout to get the DK weight gauge called for it in the pattern. And yes, like I said, this is the louder, louder. I've been watching her podcast episode. You would think I would know how to pronounce it. I think it's louder. <laughs> It is um, this beautiful vest pattern that I test knit for Rebecca, as I said, of the Craya Bay podcast. I am planning to have this video go live on Friday when the pattern is supposed to go live. So hopefully I will be able to have it linked down below. You'll be able to get your hands on it. It is a bumper of a pattern, a beautifully, beautifully done pattern. It has sweater, cardigan, and vest with v-neck and round neck options for all of them, which is just amazing. It is so lovely. One of the things that I very much appreciate about Rebecca's designing, knitting designing life career so far is just how generous she is with how she does her patterns. Um, she'll include multiple different options or multiple different views or a lot of like different modifications, long sleeves, short sleeves, different neck options. She just does, she's very generous in that and does not go through and try and penny pinch and charge you for each individual like separate thing. Um, so I very much appreciate that about her. And also her designs are just lovely. I took a little bit of b-roll of this before I started filming so I'll go ahead and pop that in here while I'm talking about it. It was a very fascinating construction. It was something different from anything that I have ever done before. Um, as I mentioned in my previous podcast episode, you started with the back and you would knit the back to a certain length and then you picked up and knit the two fronts and then you connected the fronts and knit it a little bit longer and then you connected the front and the back and then you worked in the round for the rest of the body. And like I said, it was just, it was a different construction to anything that I've done before. It was a little bit challenging, but like not in a bad way. It was in a... a I don't know how you would describe it, like a brain itching sort of way, which sounds so strange, but it just, I loved it. I loved it so, so much. It was definitely not a project that I could just work on willy-nilly whenever. Um, it was something that I had to do only during like nap times or in the evenings. Um, and it was so much fun. <laughs> the cable patterns are very, very simple to do. Not gonna lie. It did get a bit monotonous after I had joined in the round and I was just working the body because you have to do the cable crossing. is It's a pretty frequent repeat. I don't know if I can say how many rows of a re it, between the repeats there are because it's a paid for pattern. But it was a very frequent um, cable, cable row that you had to do. And so it wasn't something that you could just kind of sort of power through mindlessly. I'm very glad <laughs> that I applied for the vest version and not the sweater or the cardigan version because doing the whole full length sleeves might have done me in at the end. <laughs> and then also, as you may have seen from, I'm hoping to have a little vlog video that goes live before this video, so hopefully you've seen that. Um, if you don't know, my family, my little family got sick. Um, about two weeks ago now, and so I lost an entire week's worth of knitting. Um, it just 
there was a period of, I think it was like seven days where I did not knit a stitch. And so I was really, really worried that I was not going to get this done in time. Um, but I managed to finish up the last little bit of the body, do the ribbing, and it's beautiful. It's perfect. I'm so glad that I, the way that I did it was I used, um, here, let me, I actually have the last skein of yarn that I have. Um, I had four skeins of this yarn and I used three and a teeny weeny bit. <laughs> and the way that I've always done it when I hold fingering weight yarn double is I just pull from the inside and the outside and it works perfectly for me. Um, I know a lot of people will do it where they actually split the skein and then hold it double. Um, I've never done that. Like not intentionally. If I have like scraps or something, I might do that, but I always do it like this. Um, and I really like it because then you just have to have one ball. But the way that I did it is once I ran out of a... So I ran out of my first skein of yarn before I had joined in the round, but I had completed joining the two fronts. So then with my new skein of yarn, before I connected it back to the body, I picked up and did the neckline, um, which I should mention, I did one slight change from what the pattern called for. Instead of doing just a standard single layer of moving, I did a double layer and then folded it over. I knit twice as much as the pattern called for and then folded it over to make a double layered neckband. And my thought with that was, was that I could then add some elastic into the neckband if I needed to. I sort of intentionally picked up, there wasn't a specific number of stitches that you had to pick up, there was just a rate of pickup, like a certain amount of stitches per rows or whatever. And I didn't pay too, too much attention to that. I picked up what kind of felt right and so my neckline when I'm not wearing it it definitely looks like it's a bit big and it comes down a little bit further on my neck than I think most of the versions do but I intentionally did that because as I've mentioned before I'm very sensitive to things sitting like right here on my neck and so my thinking is is that if I do it this way and then add in a bit of elastic I can really customize how cinched in it is or not. Um, so that's why I did that. But anyway, so I finished the first skein of yarn, picked up and knit the neckband with the second skein, and then once I had finished the second skein of yarn, when I used when I started my third skein of yarn, I stopped and did the armbands and then finished the body. And I am so glad that I did that because it just meant that once I finished the body, I was done. Like I just needed to weave in the ends and we were set and good to go. So that is definitely something I'll I'll look at doing in the future. Um because yeah it's just it's perfect I love it <laughs> it actually it works so beautifully over this dress um I when I first tried it on before blocking it was definitely a bit snug and I can't remember exactly how much ease the pattern recommends but I think it's like two to four inches or something and I intentionally picked a size that would give me zero to maybe a little bit of negative ease because I think I mentioned in my last episode um I'm pregnant, I'm going to be postpartum and breastfeeding and all of that, and so there's going to be a lot of body weight fluctuations. And so my thinking was that if I did one that fit me kind of snugly right now, that then as my body changes and stuff, it gives me, it'll give me a little bit more ease, but I won't be like swimming in it. And I love it. I love it so much. <laughs> Um, it was a bit tight and I was a little bit worried before I blocked it, but then I blocked it and everything just... I can't tell you how much I love it. <laughs> it's just so exactly what I envisioned and I couldn't be more pleased. <laughs> Which is like I said, I put it on this morning and it looked so perfect that I knew I wanted to talk about it to all of you today. So here we are. <laughs> but anyway, I think that's about it. Um, the last thing of note is actually I knit the third size and I used a 2.75 millimeter needle. I think that's right. Or was it? Is it still in here? Yes, a US 2 or a... Is that right? 2.75. No, I think this is my... Yes, the other needles over here. I use the US 2 for the ribbing and I use the 2.5 for the 
um, which I guess would be a three millimeter needle for the main portion of the body. The pattern calls for a US size three. Um, I didn't have my US size three available. <laughs> And I knew that um, I am typically a looser knitter. I am finding that I am, with some pattern designers, I have to go down like four to six needle sizes to get gauge, which is just insane to me. Um, but uh, I knew it was gonna be a little bit looser and I tested it and the gauge was um, fine. And I knew that also it was gonna stretch and kind of grow and whatnot because it's a super wash yarn. And again, it worked out perfectly, so. That is all that I have to say about this. I don't think I would ever do any... I'm not gonna say I wouldn't ever do it, but I don't think I would be knitting anything cabled anytime soon. <laughs> I didn't mind it. I did the whole thing without a cable needle, but it was just a lot. And I'm ready for some more simple, mindless, fun, squishy, stockinette, garter, whatever. Simple things, which is basically what I've been working on. Um, so let me show you my half-finished object. It is a sock. I'm holding it in this cute little bag that was made by Susan of Delightful Works. She gifted it to me maybe a couple years ago now, a year and a half ago. And um, I actually just finished this one this morning. I finished a sock for myself. Um, I am participating in the Dandelion and Dogwood sock knit along that they're doing this year. And um, so I've been trying to figure out what sock I'm going to do for my March socks. And I have another sock project that I'm working on. I actually have, technically I have three other sock whips, but two of them that are more active, one that's in the closet and hasn't been touched in a few months. Um, but as I was working on those, I realized that, again, since I lost a whole week's worth of knitting time in March, and since I've been so focused on this project and trying to get this done, that I wasn't going to finish the other one in time to count it as the March my March socks, and so I cast on, day before yesterday, in the evening, a pair of shorty socks out of some Patton's Croy yarn. This is just this cute little striped yarn, um, and it's in the Northern Lights colorway. I still have about this much left, and I have, I just started the second one this morning, so I finished this one and cast on the second one. And I'm doing things a little bit different from my normal sock recipe for this one um, because it is the Patton's Croy yarn, which typically I find to be a much thicker, spongier sort of a yarn. Um, the last pair that I knit that I knit for my husband, it wasn't. It felt much like a typical fingering weight yarn. This one feels more like the typical Patton's Croy that I have worked with previously. So I only cast on 52 stitches on a US size one 2.25 millimeter when I typically do 56 stitches. And then I did a shadow wrap heel because again this pair of socks is mostly about speed and getting them done before the end of March. <laughs> I do find that the heel flap and gusset fits much better but this works in a pinch <laughs> and it's really easy to do. Um, and I don't dislike the fit. It just it doesn't quite fit as well. Um, and then after I did the heel, I worked a couple of rows and then I decreased down to 48 stitches for the rest of the foot. And um, it seems to have worked pretty much perfectly. I'm curious to see what will happen as I wear them and whatnot. Because um, the, the previous socks that I've knit with Patton's Core that I've done just my standard 56 stitches, they get really loose when I'm wearing them. And then if like my foot rubs on the ground funny or whatever, it the whole sock will twist around and it kind of drives me nuts. So I'm really happy with how this one is looking. Um, and yeah, I just realized that when I wove in my end, I did not pay much attention and now I've got it peeking out there. Oh well. <laughs> I'm not worried enough about it to change it. It's a sock. Um, but yeah, I, I absolutely love how it turned out. I'm really happy with how the heel happened to perfectly do it, where from the front, like, you're missing a repeat of these two colors, but the white and color stay consistently striped, and then it just took that color and that color in the heel, and it worked out perfectly. So I'm hoping the second one does that too. But again, I only have one ball of this, which is a 50 gram ball. 
And I typically can get two, two socks out of one 50 gram ball if I'm doing shorty socks. Um, so hopefully it'll all, it'll all be fine. Um, but what I was going to say is I'm not worried about it matching at all. Um, that's not super important to me in socks. If it happens, I'm like, oh, cool. If it doesn't, I'm like, oh, well. <laughs> and I am actually knitting these instead of doing it on double pointed needles like I typically do. I'm doing it on a circular magic loop. Um, these are the high, high, sharp knitting needles. <laughs> And again, US size 1, 2.25 millimeter needle, and I really enjoyed it. Um, I don't know if it's something because I've been working the, my other sock project on DPN so much um, that it's kind of nice for a little bit of a change, but I really enjoyed it. And I'm curious to see, I can't remember now, I feel like I've looked it up before, if there's a high, high sharps um, double pointed needle set, because I feel like I could really enjoy working with something like that. The one downside is, is I've been working on that, I worked on that sock a good bit around my toddler, and they are a bit sharp, so it makes me a little nervous that if he like falls, he's gonna like stab himself on them, and <sighs> that would not be a fun time. <laughs> um, but the next sock project that I'm working on, I just, I love it so much. It's so cute. Um, I am knitting it out of this Sock Ease, Line Brand Sock Ease yarn. I was able to pick up a couple of skeins of this when they, um, it says an old favorite made new again. They had this available for a limited time and I was able to pick up a couple of skeins and I just I love it so much. It's so, so cute. It's kind of shadowy, but hopefully you can kind of see the colors. Oh. This is very much feels like sort of that rustic, like opal or West Yorkshire spinners, like that sort of yarn, which is honestly my favorite yarn so far to knit socks with. I find it to be the most hard wearing and it just seems to last really well um, without getting holes. And it's just a 75% wool, 25% nylon blend. Um, and I, oh, it's got 437 yards to 100 grams. And I'm actually pretty far on this sock, but this is one of those socks where I decided to make them full length. And so that's why I was nervous that I wasn't gonna get it done in time because I'm not even finished with the first sock. And we still have like a, a week or 10 days left in March, but I didn't think I could knit the whole rest of the foot because I've, I've just done the leg and the heel, the whole rest of the foot of this and then another whole chunky leg and heel. But look at this striping. Oh, it's so cute. I love it so, so much. It's like a narrow stripe and I haven't really done many soft striping yarns where it's kind of this narrow look. And I just, it has, it has been a lot of fun to knit it. It's, it's brought me a lot of joy. <laughs> And again, this one was one that just super conveniently, it not only did the striping match up, but it perfectly matched up in the pattern. I'm not making much sense, but basically when I did the heel, it made this yellow stripe just a little bit wider than the rest of them, but it went right back into the right spot of the repeat, which I'm really happy about. I'm very pleased with that. Again, I hope it does it on the second sock, but I'm not holding my breath. And for this one, I did the um, a slip stitch heel flap and gusset, which, like I said, I do prefer the fit of the heel flap and gusset. It's just sometimes they're a bit, nah. <laughs> they're not the most fun heel to work. <laughs> um, but yes, I've, I've been really, really loving this. I just put it down to quickly whip up the other pair of socks um, just so that I could have something for March because it's, I like this. Um, knit along that Dandelion and Dogwood have are hosting this year because it's really pushing me to get through some of my sock yarn stash. Um, I feel like last year and the year before I ended up with so much sock yarn <laughs> and then I wasn't really in a sock knitting mood and so this year I'm really hoping to knit at least 12 pairs of socks and um, just get some of that stuff out of my stash and also knit some of the yarns, like this one I've been holding on to for a while, almost a year now. Um, I bought it last May and I've been wanting to do it, but I just haven't gotten to it. So this, this knit along is really lovely because it's kind of giving me that push to actually knit some of my beautiful sock yarns. 
Um, and then I don't know if I mentioned it, this is back on my typical stitch count, needle count. I did 56 stitches on US size one or 2.25 millimeter needles. And that works for me. It's so weird because I hear people talk about they do like 64 stitches or 72 stitches and I'm just like, whew, that'd be absolutely massive. I experimented last summer with trying to do a couple pairs of socks with 60 stitches and they were just too big. They were just too big. Even though I went down to a US size zero or two millimeter needle, whoops, I just kicked the camera. Um, even though I went down a needle size, they were still too loose and too big. And so I was like, well, guess we're sticking with the 56 stitches. <laughs> And this sock project I have again in another one of the beautiful bags by Susan of Delightful Works. Um, she is just such an excellent project bag ma maker. And it's just these cute little lemurs, I guess. And it's a nice drawstring bag. Um, something I would like to do this year is to sew a few project bags. I had thought that that might be something that I could do for an Etsy shop is just do like some simple drawstring bags or some notion pouches or something like that. But we'll see. As, mu as much as I want to do more sewing, I really haven't been doing much sewing. And if I do have sewing time, I really need to focus on making myself some maternity and nursing friendly clothing. So we'll see. But that is all the like really active projects that I have. Again, I've done a few rows on my Crescendo Summer Top sweater that I'm knitting out of this gorgeous Mystery Mouse Yarn Co. yarn. And um, my plan is, is now that I have finished this project, this is going to get some love and I just cannot wait. I have been wanting to work on it so badly, but I have really made myself work on this louder vest and um, I'm actually planning to work on this a little bit today. I'm going to be a little bit cheeky. It only took me two days to knit that other sock. And so I'm, I'm feeling confident that I can get it done by the end of March. So I'm going to treat myself and celebrate the fact that I have finished this just in time for the deadline, which is tomorrow. <laughs> and I have finished one of my socks. And so I'm going to, like I said, treat myself and work on this a bit because I just, I want it. <laughs> I want this sweater. Um, I think it's going to be just stunning and I am oh, can't wait. So there's that. The last thing that I have to talk about today is a little bit of a knitting plans video and um, it is directly related to finishing this and loving it as much as I do. Let me get a sip of tea real quick. I bought this yarn last year in the Black Friday sales. It is the Nipix Brava Sport Weight in this beautiful sort of variegated, it's called Umber Heather. And so it's got like some variations in the, in the brown of the yarn. I purchased it with the intent to knit the Ollie's Everyday Slipover by Hannah of Hannah G Knits. I've tested many of her patterns, not many, a few of her patterns, and I absolutely love her designs. They're so classic and so perfect for the children. And so um, I wanted to make last fall wanted to make my toddler a little sweater vest that he could wear on those sort of transition days i just never got around to it and then i've had some thoughts about knitting children's knitwear that i'm kind of thinking about maybe making a separate video for like a little vlog where i talk about the things that i knit for my little boy and and kind of my thoughts and what i'm kind of thinking i would do going forward for future children and for him. Um, and so I was kind of not feeling knitting much for him. But after having finished this and seeing just how warm it has kept me this morning, um, it's a pretty chilly day today. It's high and I think it is supposed to get up to like in the 50s, but this morning it was in like the mid 20s. So that's Fahrenheit. So it was pretty cold. And um, I blocked this, but I wove in all the ends and then blocked this, but I didn't snip all the ends off. And so I had to take it off to snip all the ends off. And I was really surprised that actually I took it off and I was cold, like I started getting chilly. So I was like, oh, this would be perfect for some of these spring days where it's not really cold enough for like a full on sweater or jacket, but it's still a little bit nippy. He needs a little sweater vest. <laughs> And so I'm actually, I, I've printed the pattern out. I dug through my yarn stash. I couldn't find this 
then at first I was like, where on earth did it go? But I think I'm going to cast this on either today or tomorrow. Hopefully today, because I want to get it started. Because um, that's what this was intended for. And my plan is that I will knit it a little bit bigger than I think he needs, so that hopefully he can fit it next fall. Um, and he's a pretty um, slender, tall and slender fellow. Um, so I think it'll be fine if I knit it just um, like maybe a size up from what I would. And um, I think it'll have plenty of stretch. I might just make it a little bit longer than the pattern calls for. Because I feel like, at least for my family, my siblings, they always grew out of it lengthwise before they did widthwise. Um, yeah, so I, I want to cast that on. And I'm really... I'm actually like really excited about it. Like I, I bought the yarn and was very excited about it when I got the yarn, but then it just kind of, basically I've noticed that I haven't had my little boy wear his hand knits very much. I also found that I was just a lot more worried when he was wearing some of his hand knit items and that I felt like I was kind of trying to make him be a little bit more careful than he really needed to be because he's a toddler boy. Like, he just wants to run and play and do silly things. Um, so I'll talk about it more in depth in a different video, but I just kind of have been thinking about what my approach to knitting baby and toddler clothes specifically. Because once they get older, like, I think it's totally fine. But specifically, like, baby and toddler things. Um, However, this is going to be out of a 100% acrylic yarn. I think it's it's machine wash and tumble dry um, safe, so I can just throw it in with the rest of his laundry, which I knit the pass, passport <laughs> pullover from Hannah Genius. I test knit that one, and I knit it out of a 100% acrylic yarn that I can just throw in the washer. You have to hang dry it or line dry it, um, but you can just throw it in the washing machine. And he's actually worn that one probably the most of anything I've knit him. Um, it's more specifically the things that I've knit him out of like my hand dyed yarn and stuff that I'm a bit more weird about. So I think that this will be really lovely and it'll be a really good sort of wearable piece for the rest of the spring and next fall. So that is all that I have today for you as far as knitting and everything else. Um, yeah, that's it. <laughs> I hope that you enjoyed today's video and I hope that you are having some lovely, lovely spring weather wherever you are. And yeah, I hope to be back and see you soon. I'm planning to do a few more vlog style videos kind of in between my um, longer proper podcasts, if you will. Um, and also if you're interested, I finally filmed another book video for my um, reading channel. It's called Woldenburn Reads. I'll link the video down below. It's just talking about 10 books that I recommend for reading for spring. Um, I haven't done a book video since like, last June, so I just I just got really inspired and decided to do another book video so I'm hoping to do some more of those because I do so love talking about books and I've tried to do it on the podcast sometimes but then it just makes the podcast so long and I'm trying to keep these shorter which doesn't seem to happen much but anyway if you're interested be sure to check that out um, I hope that you enjoyed today's video and I'll see you soon on the next one bye